Hi guys, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today we are joined by our colleagues from Enadoc, Laris Wasanta and Lakmal. Today we're gonna be discussing robotic process automation and how this is gonna help organizations worldwide. So hi guys, how are you doing today? Doing great, thank you very much. Hey, hello. Doing great, Hi. thank you. Okay, so um, we're just gonna have like a casual conversation right now about uh, robotic process automation. And, uh, you know, I think uh, for some people who are not really familiar with um, robotic process automation or RPA, can you just like give us a, a brief introduction of what it is? I think, Ara, you know, before you get into robotic process automation, I think uh, we need to go a little bit higher level and understand what is process automation and what are the branches of process automation. So the the, the, the process automation needs to improve the efficiencies of organization. And, uh, and, and, and the process automation has multiple branches on it. But, uh, uh, you know, are we going to uh, uh, look at Look at look at this, you know, in detail. But if you uh, if you if you see the business process automation has been existing for quite a long time, and uh, the robotic process automation is a new buzzword. But um, uh, it, you know, uh, in in reality, all these different tools bring. Uh, efficiencies to organizations. So it is a time, uh, I think this is the time that we should be looking at these tools more uh, in detail, uh, uh, especially, uh, we, you know, if you if you have to, uh, you know, we are not being able to, uh, um, uh, under the current circumstances, we cannot go to work even, you know, so so the, the process automation can help uh, a lot of, uh, lot of people. So the, the biggest two branches is the one is the business process automation, the other one is the robotic process automation. Uh, the, the yeah, main maybe, maybe a sense we can also add in that uh, uh, ever since the last you know 20 years or maybe even longer, this was also uh, what we call workflow. So uh, most uh, uh, people have maybe heard about uh, using uh, uh, workflow automation. So business process automation, workflow automation are a part of the same kind of family, right? Really taking a standard uh, business process that is being repeated often enough that it makes sense to automate it. Yes, 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 Lars. So the, the business process automation uh, generally will have a, a human being involved. Whereas in the robotic process automation, uh, uh, you know, we'll will have no human involvement uh, in, in in that within that process. So it's but it's, also but also no robots really. No, no, they actually there are no robots, but it's a, it's <laughs> a program. Like confusion everybody's having, right? They think robot, okay. So that means we'll have some mechanical robots doing something. It, yeah, working it, it on the keyboard. It mean yeah. that it's an automated <laughs> process, right? It's more of an automated business process automation versus kind of a human triggered business person business process automation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, and then something to add, uh, those is, uh, so basically when it comes to robotics, uh, most of the time it is uh, repeatable processes which is uh, done by a human being which can be uh, kind of programmed into a robotic process automation, robotic yes. process. Yes. Uh, so the, the the business process automation is not very new. You know, you know, we have been doing it la as last said. You know, for the last uh, uh, thirty years, I think we have been in this industry. So ever since uh, we have been uh, seeing the business process automation, uh, but business process automation also uh, is breaking into a number of segments. And um, if organizations do understand that they have a very uh, streamlined process. Uh, you know, then obviously they can uh, set it up in such a way that the uh, maybe let, let's say for an example, if it is a approval of a certain uh, a process. So if you know exactly how the approval process is being taking place, we will be able to uh, create an environment so uh, documents or forms or other related information flow through a specific logical process to achieve that. But uh, having said that, uh, many organizations also do not have uh, these logical streamlined processes being uh, set up. So that is where uh, they adapt 
ad hoc processes it is not necessarily that just because they don't have a streamlined process uh, they have ad hoc processes some process inherently are ad hoc like uh, like uh, recently i've been uh, talking to one of the uh, uh, client uh, uh, who is uh, having a large uh, fleet of vehicles right and uh, they wanted to uh, uh, look at how their tires are being uh, serviced because they have around 1000 odd uh, trucks which are moving every day day in and out and uh, they wanted to have uh, they wanted to have their trucks being serviced moment they come into the to the garage to be serviced now uh, when uh, when they report this when they immediately report this one you know that that has to uh, be assigned to a, a technician and you will not know which technician is available so that is a very ad hoc uh, uh, kind of assignment and uh, you cannot pre program that one with a logic whereas a uh, if you take about a, a loan uh, from a bank uh, the, the, we know exactly which steps that uh, somebody will follow so i think it's a, it's a most uh, ex- a better example for a streamlined process probably last you can add something uh, uh, on the top for uh, which is relevant to you yeah today. i i think you know uh, for example in an organization we might have a a leave request a uh, process so if i if i if i'm going to be on leave or sick leave i will go and file for a sick leave during a specific process so uh, it means hr has to be informed my management has to be informed and and that process can be defined and can be automated in sense that we can we can uh, uh, fill a form whether it's a paper form so uh, it's a electronic form that process can go through either a manual or automated uh, process to uh, you know get the right person to approve and to update the leave uh, uh, credits and things like this but then an ad hoc could be uh, a, you know i need to go and pick my kids from school today because the uh, the school called and say the bus service is not working and you just send a message or or send a quick email to your boss it's not going to be removed from your it's just like an it's is more like an ad hoc so he will just say yes it's okay so uh, you, it's not that you're going to go and fill a form and then that goes through a process because it's just something that happened and you just need to fix it uh quickly so so ad hoc uh, uh of course if you if you talk about small organizations it seems like almost everything is ad hoc because it's 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 difficult to uh, uh find the similarity or the 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 line in a business process but with large or organizations the larger the organization the more streamlined the process becomes because you need to have compliance with rules uh, uh, throughout the organization it cannot be one department is doing it like this the other one if i go if i want to go or leave i just call my uh, you know manager on the phone the day before and say hey boss can i take a leave tomorrow he's like yeah that's fine but the other part of the company uh, they have to file for leave two weeks in advance and they have to go through a process so very often when the organization grows the rules become more more streamlined because there's more people that need to go through the same process or more uh, you know things that has to be managed in the same way so 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 therefore as an organization grows you will find more streamlined processes you will find manuals for processes you will say okay here's our guide for doing this and uh, sometimes companies hire consultants to identify and define all the processes then the benefit of doing that of course is that you can then take data out you can know how much re- resources have been used how many uh, you know times this process is being running and then you can use that to to build a better processes where of if you don't have any record or you just keep on using kind of ad hoc processes you will never have any uh, way really of improving it so so business process automation goes also hand in hand with automating with 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 improvements that you can do in those processes reducing the time uh, finding out redundant uh, you know uh, processes or things like that in 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 that loop so I, i i guess that that's what i can add yes yes last you know so so you know one of the the, the great advantage of using streamlined processes you can define your service level so you can you can say that this is the service level you know when you apply for uh, this leave or apply for the loan you know we generally take two and a half hours to approve or three hours to approve because we know exact steps that it follows and uh, uh, what is the fastest uh, time that we can finish and what is the average time and what was the 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 time that it took most uh in in a, in a, in a in a situation uh, whereas 
um, and in terms of the ad hoc process, I agree with you. And you know, some sometimes there is a, a deviation to that. Uh, some processes cannot be streamlined, like uh, we have seen. Uh, um, uh, uh, in in uh, uh, in uh, complaint management, uh, so sometimes we don't know exact escalation process based on how the customers' reactions are and the, the problems that customer is having and how the escalation happens. So at that point, you know, maybe even a streamlined process can have at the end or in the middle an ad hoc process. So you might require a sudden escalation two levels above to uh, to cater the requirement of the customer. So uh, I think a combination of the two uh, exists everywhere. But the more streamlined processes are, more efficiency that you can and you can measure and uh, bring efficiency into organizations. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Ara, do you have a question yeah. for us? Yes, so we talked about two branches of process automation, right? So uh, you discussed business process automation and uh, one more thing, which I have been actually asking about earlier. So if we can jump into like robotic process automation, how is this now more different? And if you can just give us a more in-depth um, explanation of what it is. Yeah, so maybe I can start on that from a high level. So basically, the the, the difference is that a robotic uh, a process automation is basically an, an, an automated process where uh, there is a um, there is no person involved. There's no human involved. That's why we tend to call it robotic. So uh, uh, it could be um, based on a, a uh, we call it a trigger. A trigger could be uh, uh, anything that is measured automatically or sensed automatically that start a process. Let's say, for example, very, very simple process uh, could be that uh, we have a, uh, a um, uh, backup uh, power plant. Uh, 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 in 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 a in a factory or in a in a company, and uh, that generator, so a pack backup generator, that backup generator will have a fuel tank, okay, and the fuel tank can have a sensor inside, and when the sensor goes below a certain level, automatically a workflow starts to order more gasoline, okay, so so uh, a, a, a sensor sense a certain instance is happening and then it starts a process and at the end of the day it triggers that somebody will come and fill gasoline in this specific uh, uh, unit um so so that's that's uh, 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 what we call robotic process automation and then the 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 screen scraping is really that uh, very often we are dealing with different but not yet connected solutions let's say for example you have a a finance system and you have a, a client relationship management system but those two are either not integrated or it's difficult to integrate them now we can use a, a, a human person would sit and look at these two so for example you call your bank the bank will open or your telco or something they will open in the CRM your record when did you last call uh, what you are uh, uh, standing uh, in terms of your type of relationship and then they will open another screen maybe that your uh, uh, telco balances or maybe uh, that your uh, um, uh, bank balance balances or things like this. So this person will look at these two screens and then uh, uh, maybe fill a third a third kind of uh, uh, screen with some information. Now, what we automate here is that we scrape these two screens. Basically, we, t we capture what is on the screen, convert it into a text and build a logic to execute that specific uh, process. So those are screen scraping. So this is way to include legacy systems uh, which are normally not connected and automate business processes. So, so for example, we receive an invoice we can scrape that screen. Actually, we don't even look at the screen. It's 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 instead of displaying this information on a screen, it's 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 basically run inside the process itself. Uh, and and uh, and and therefore we can execute work that was normally done by somebody who would sit and look at two three different systems, combine the information, and put them in another system. 
Vasanta, you can uh, maybe go in a little deeper on that, or uh... Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think you went deep enough, you know. So, <laughs> and uh, I was looking for robots around, for bots <laughs> around, <laughs> and uh, so one of the the things uh, that uh, that I could add on top of that is um, the uh, the screen grabbing or the, the the portion of this branch of automating from legacy systems uh, uh, collecting data or transferring data between uh, has over the period of time improved because of the artificial intelligence uh, capabilities Absolutely. of yeah. uh, so so the so the uh, it is not purely just uh, it knows that every time you need to capture the uh, the information from this location of the image or from the screen and it can be a little bit more intelligent in that sense uh, not, i mean it can be intelligent i would not say a little bit uh, to extract information and collate them and uh, put it into uh, different environments yes. so that's uh, that, that's that's that one side of it and uh, one to one one to one um, uh, 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 machine to machine machine to machine is becoming very interesting today with a lot of iot devices coming in and uh, uh, i think uh, iot I, I, so internet of things that means the uh, sensors uh, computers that picks up uh, information uh, in different kind of environments Yes, and absolutely. that are connected to the internet, right? Yeah, absolutely. I have seen uh, some applications like uh, uh, some uh, companies are uh, running uh, automatic sensing uh, for uh, whether AC air conditioners and lights are on, you know, after the business hours, and sending uh, messages to uh, to the security to you know uh, either switch it off or you know whether look at that, take actions if the temperatures goes up in certain areas, uh, if there's a fire hazard. Uh, so, so there, there's a large number of applications that are coming in this area as well, and uh, I think uh, I think we can move forward now. And yeah, okay, yeah, yeah Ara. Yes. Okay, so, so yeah. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. So we actually have an example here of uh, the quarantine pass workflow. So those who I don't know what this is. So quarantine pass is something that we have here. Um, in the Philippines right now. I'm not sure if they have it in other countries, but I think we can discuss uh, the workflow that goes into <clears throat> yeah, I think getting- I can, I, Last I can, I think I don't need to jump in, you know, so we, you know, we, we are also under actually full lockdown. And yesterday morning, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in Colombo and uh, we were just, uh, they opened uh, for a few hours a window for people to buy groceries. And you could see um, uh, we had chaos. Everybody's rushing into into supermarkets uh, to just pick up things, and I think uh, I I don't think that was a very good move. But uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, also you know there was no other system that was available because uh, some of the people uh, uh, actually following the social distance, but some of the people were not. And uh, so that, that was a that was a big uh, thing. And so there are a lot of discussions going on, you know, how we can optimize this process. So I think uh, you already have a process. So I think, uh, you know, just you could hear. Yeah, right? so, so uh, um, uh, uh, for those, of course, there, there, are, there are people just also listening because we are uh, uh, also publishing this on our uh, on our uh, podcast. Uh, so so uh, I can just explain, you know, the highlight of the process. So so what, what happens actually this is uh, uh, you know a process which is um related to the current uh, uh lockdown that we are having in philippines but i i have seen a few other countries doing the same thing um and and uh, it's not too different from the normal process of issuing like a gate pass um, if you have any larger organization uh, which have a, a compound any factories any uh, uh, facilities uh, normally you cannot enter in the area or in the building without having some kind of an id or some kind of uh, uh, a gate pass so this is similar so so what happened in sri lanka um, uh, did not uh, happen as much i would say in philippines because in philippines first of all they started up with uh, putting up some very uh, uh, 
general rules and and they did not enforce it much in the first couple of days um but then they started to enforce more and more strict so now the situation is uh we have a lockdown we have a kind of a 24-hour curfew we are not allowed to leave our houses um uh, we can go into if you have a garden we can go there if you have a balcony we can go there but in general, we are not allowed to leave the house, except if we are going to go for uh, groceries uh, or we are going to go for any medical uh, requirement. Okay, pharmacies, okay. Uh, groceries, health uh, health stores, uh, uh, those kind of shops are open. And people who work there are allowed to go to work and they can go home, but they are not, uh, there's no public transport. So they, they have... Uh, they, those companies and the government have set up specific transportation just to make sure that those people can get to and from work. And of course, you know, in a country with 110 million people, that's not easy. And I wouldn't say it's working 100%. But as a as a private resident, what they have done is that they have they have uh, they have said, okay, within your city limit. You can go out. You have to bring your city ID. Uh, I mean, some kind of a proof of address. And if somebody will uh, stop you, uh, you'll have to uh, show that you have a, 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 a residence in the city, and that that uh, you are, you have to explain that you are going to buy groceries or you are coming back from groceries. And I think, uh, you know, 99.9 percent, there's not going to be any issue with that. But it gives, of course, the government a a, 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 a way to round up people who don't have a business who are you know hanging out or walking around or trying to do stuff that they should not do and therefore they can keep the social distance now if i want to go to the next city and of course the next city could be if i live in one part of the like where i live the next city is literally on the other side of the building because that's where the city limit is and the supermarket i can go to which is closer is there but if i want to go there i need to have a quarantine pass so they issue one quarantine pass per per uh, family so how that that was done was that they they they, they created a, a form uh, a simple document and uh, which they put on a website that you can download so then you would fill that form and then you would email it uh, to the local authority along with a uh, uh, copy of your id card and um, and then, uh, of course, uh, 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 they would then uh, download this document and then they would uh, sign and stamp the document and then they would upload it and send it by email. And as a result, it took actually 24 hours for them to process this versus with, if I would physically go there, they said that they will process it within two, three minutes. So, of course, in this situation, you don't really want people to go uh, um, uh, to an office and line up with other people, even though they have have a proper distances they have done everything very professional there's no there's no complaint about that but the best thing would be that i don't have to leave my house i will just sit in my house i will apply and i will get it but unfortunately the process that is there is having so many steps and and having so many interactions that it is difficult for 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 them to do it faster because it's requiring upload download uh, cut and paste stamp scan and send so so uh, this could have been done completely different using a a, a, a process uh, automation or automated workflow because we could have had a form uh, that form we fill in online and then we attach uh, our document uh, our our uh, uh, ID card, and we submit that. It would go through a workflow into the uh, uh, process where whoever is authorized to approve this simply have to look at the ID and the, so the picture of the ID together with the uh, 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 form that was filled and say, okay, I approve. And once that is pro uh, uh, approved, the system would automatically assemble this uh, uh, PDF that includes the, uh, the quarantine pass and even could put a unique uh, QR code or something like this on the quarantine uh, pass to increase the security around that and then send that to uh, to the person who requested it. So a simple uh, situation where the, author uh, the authorized person would simply have to just say yes, 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 yes. And that's all that would be required. Of course, uh, 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 you could even build much more complex that a person doesn't have to approve. But if, if we just take a simple solution, that simple solution could have, uh, uh, you know, been running this kind of uh, uh, of application, and it would have minimized the work for those people who are frontliners, right? And it we, it could have been possible to say, 
you can only get a manual copy if you if you uh, have no internet or if you are in a uh, disposition uh, if you have a disability and something like this and everybody else should apply online so so, so, so yeah that's a very interesting like, that's a very interesting uh, uh, thing what you said you know so if you could isolate 60% of the people who can do online uh, application and if you can take that 40% who may not have the access to internet or maybe who are in a different segment in the society still you are reducing the risk of uh, uh, the officers who are being involved in this process as well as uh, individuals right you know well so i mean if if this was a mobile uh, form it doesn't yeah. have to be a mobile application. I'm sure we could reach, you know, almost 100 percent because, uh, depending, of course, of your neighborhood. But in our neighborhood here, I'm quite sure there's nobody who doesn't have a capable smartphone that you could have taken a picture of your document, you could have a, a, a filter form and add it and send it. And actually, we 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 have an interesting tool as well. I'm not going to try to sell our solution here, but we have actually a possibility where you could scan your ID and do a selfie and it would do facial recognition on your selfie and on your id to make sure the person who's applying is actually the correct person right so so you could actually increase this value of this of this uh, process by including security by putting for example a qr code on the document that means that anybody who checks can verify that the person who's presenting have a real document that was not frauded because the paper based solution that is there today or the scan document that they distribute anybody could fake this at home you know i can take the i can take the quarantine pass i made and i can make it for you as well i can edit it and send it to anybody and yeah. uh, you know maybe it's not such a big deal because at the end of the day yeah, yeah in this particular case it may not be a major deal but yeah but in this case but in other cases it will be a big deal if you can enter into a factory where they are doing uh you know sensitive uh, manufacturing of uh, electronics or any oil processing facility or things like this right so so uh, in some cases of course the automation you can do is of a simple process that doesn't require that much security but the idea here is that you can take it to any level you want with the, but, with but the, the last the question is how how much time it takes for this kind of solutions to be get deployed right and you know especially uh, in a situation like this you know how fast can we ca can you do this you know so yeah so i mean in our case for example with the tools available this this uh, workflow could have been kicked out you know properly in an hour or two you know with the capable the, you know person who's developing this because we don't need a developer we need to understand the business process and probably would have spent more time uh, you know making the form beautiful uh, and say oh i want the logo over here i want the you know uh, text in bold there i want that and that and that that would have taken longer time than actually doing the business process and then you could automate now uh, you could say okay we process the this form this forms twice a day and all the uh, the person who needs to do is to log in and click 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 and then those are processed and sent immediately and it would have enabled this decision maker to work from home Okay, mm. this decision maker who's now taking this decision could have been sitting at home and looking at this request and approve them. Right? So social distance you reinventing your yeah, so reinventing the house. The office. So so our our senior uh, leadership in our countries, in our villages, in our cities, they are sitting in the office taking a big risk, which they didn't have to take. They could have been sitting at home and doing this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are so many, there are so many, uh, uh, you know, dimensions in automating a business process. It's not just a matter of okay. In this case, you increase the security, you 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 lower the processing time, you uh, uh, increase the the uh, decrease the risk of these people involved, and you enable that a more of a, a, a of a, a, a 24 seven kind of service level that you could do. So it in, it, it takes me it took me 24 hours to get a manual electronic card but it would have taken me 10 minutes if i would have taken my car gotten over there sit in the queue with uh, you know 200 other people waited for my turn being handed a paper 
that somebody else has stamped and signed that could also have a, a transmission, right? I mean, we, we, we are trying to limit those exposures right now. So this kind of solution could have solved a lot of issues at the same time. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, saying that they should, uh, maybe they would not know about it and maybe they would not go out and buy a solution to fix this. But if you say, for example, that we deploy this countrywide, how many thousands or millions of these passes have to be issued all over a country like the Philippines or in Sri Lanka or any other country? So if you could have a quarantine pass application like this running on a stand, we're not talking about somebody needs to sit and de design an app. We're just talking about standard uh, uh, stuff that is out of the box and working. Okay, so 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 uh, that's basically the, the the concept of an automated workflow and a practical implementation in today's environment. That's you know what I what I have seen the last few days. I'm I, I'm happy with the service I got, but I, I'm just thinking those people who are sitting and doing it, they're spending a lot of their effort and and they're working hard, you know, to do these things that could have been done better and automated, and at the same time they would have not uh, put any risk on themselves and they yeah, yeah. you know we, we are stretching everybody right there's no need to stretch for things yeah. that would be automated Absolutely. yeah and if i could actually add on to that so like um the the experience that you have with the with the workflow in in your in your um village is actually different from like what we have in like smaller um uh, smaller local governments or like smaller areas because uh, just uh, an example if i can if, if i can share with everyone um here in my location so it actually takes 48 hours um to issue the the quarantine pass because uh like people, and I'm not just you know, people, like actually two to three people would actually go house to house. Um, you need to fill out a form in person um, and then they're gonna give you the quarantine pass, quote unquote quarantine pass, which is just like printed on a piece of bond paper. Yes. And it's empty. Like you're just gonna, they're gonna leave that to you for the day. And then you're just gonna fill that out um, you know, put your name in there, the address by yourself. So you can easily like manipulate the data or when they leave you with that, you can easily, you know, make photocopies of that yes. because they gave that to you as a blank document. Right. Yeah. And then the next day they would then come back and put like a control number and then ha they'll have you laminate that. So if you don't have a machine to laminate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who has laminate? I don't even have a printer right? at home. <laughs> right. And then you have to go out. So you have to go out and have that laminated. So I feel like there's a lot of like unnecessary physical contact or, yeah. you know, unnecessary. So it kind of like defeats the purpose. Yeah. So, so as a, as a, as just as a normal citizen, right, you can see the benefit of this, right? You can see how this kind of automation can work and, and how in practical implementations, it's not about, you know, oh, now we are going to take some job away from somebody because the, the, the world today is different. We, we, we now we have work from home okay so we don't have those uh, uh, tools at home uh, you know to cut and paste and laminate and all this stuff but at the same time we have a skeleton workforce who's working you know 24 7 trying to do everything and they're the ones sitting and doing all this manual work that you know imagine also going from house to house what is the risk of that for those people who go house to house right i mean you are thinking oh maybe they can infect me but if they infect you they are also infected themselves right <laughs> So, you know, you're, you're scared that you might, oh, they come to my house, I have to be careful with these guys, they might be infected. But maybe they were not infected when they start to work. Maybe they got infected, you know, in your neighbor's house, right? Or the other neighbor's yeah. house. So so it's just a, a, a practical implementation of something like this. And this is an application that could be up and running in a few, uh, you know, uh, hours, and then it could save a lot and lot of time and effort, right? And, 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 and uh, you know, so, so, so uh, I think I think there's a lot of things we can do in this area. Yes, Lars. Right. I, I, I yeah. think uh, I, I think it is uh, the the so you know this is a new way of looking at how to get social distancing implemented. Yes. Uh, and and especially with uh, with the people who are the, that skeleton force, you know, protecting them from getting exposed to uh, uh, to everything. I think I yes. think that's that's my uh, uh, that's how I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we were talking about like, you know, the solutions and the implementation. So if it's okay with you guys, if you can just like share or share some, some, um, 
uh, solutions or some tools that, you know, people could actually look into. It's not like you're not, you're definitely not selling, but just like to give people I, I, an I'd idea. I'd be happy to sell as well, you know, if somebody wants to buy. There. <laughs> if right. To buy, we will also sell. That's not a that's not an issue. But I think you know if you if if you're looking at, uh, uh, you know the 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 simpler workflows. Obviously, a lot like what you saw is that the workflow we have here about the uh, there is a workflow, right? Um, uh, uh, and I did not have to go physically and get a document, but it was like it was like via Outlook, right? I have to send email. I received email. I filled the document in Word. I uh, you know uh, 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 took a picture with the with the phone and 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 mm -hmm. uh, added that and so on, right? So that automation also ad hoc at automation you can do with. Uh, those tools that are available, but if you really want to automate processes properly, uh, you know, at, at one end you have machine to machine, and the other end you have the business automation. In in our case, we have uh, two major tools that we use for business automation, business process automation. I mean, we have been a, a Microsoft partner and uh, uh, advocate for SharePoint for the last I don't know 15 years or something, and we have thousands of clients, literally thousands of clients where we have automated workflows uh, uh, using SharePoint. But but it's just that SharePoint is good for very complex things, very big things, and where there's an integration with a lot of different tools. But for more simpler tasks, like the one we mentioned earlier, the gate pass, the, the, the simpler workflows, which, you know, might not even be so simple. But for those, we have developed a tool ourselves called Flodo, which is available to solve those kind of problems. And and the, 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 the main difference is that where one is more of a, I could say like a toolbox, the other one is more like a ready tool. It can it can with less coding get things ready. But if you go to the other end with machine to machine, we also use uh, uh, Flodo, but we also use Microsoft Flow. And if it's more on a personal basis, there's something like IFTTT, which is if then this, then this, or something. If <laughs> then this, if yeah, then whatever this, it or is, something yeah. like this, and Sapia and so on. So there's different tools available in in the market. And 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 uh, first I did identify what is your problem and then try to find the solution secondly. Uh, but but I feel like with SharePoint and Flodo, uh, you could solve most of your uh, organization's uh, uh, you know workflow issues and you can solve a lot of uh, problems uh, in your process of uh, digitally transforming your organization because at the end of the day, this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about digital transformation so as a consumer, as a citizen, as a, as an employee, we are not expecting that it should take 48 hours to get a gate pass because I cannot leave my house without it. Uh, you know, I'm expecting that it should either come faster or there should not be a rule at all. Uh, uh, so, so uh, uh, you know, um, these are the kind of thing driving this right now is not only the current, you know, uh, uh, coronavirus uh, situation, but it is the drive for uh, automation, digital transformation, using the tools to improve the service level uh, internally and externally. Yeah, so one, one interesting thing, last uh, Outlook is part of workflow. Uh, you know, many people don't realize that uh, because it's it's uh, uh, you know mail, uh, of course not Outlook. You know, e any any form of email uh, when it was uh, introduced and when we um, uh, when uh, when start using, we don't realize that it has been a, a way to manage ad hoc uh, uh, workflows. You know, so we send mails, copy to other people, we forward uh, the way we wish. Uh, that that's that's a very good tool for ad hoc uh, 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 processing, but only challenge with uh, uh, tools like email is that you cannot track down end of the day the uh, you know the, there are mail threads but you know you cannot really consolidate and report uh, on on the on the process so because you cannot consolidate and report you are not being able to identify kind of a service level with ad hoc level ad hoc processes as well you can define service levels you can find what is the longest time what is the shortest time 
and to understand how uh, even ad hoc workflows work uh, compared to uh, uh, streamlined processes where you know it is just part of the feature you know where you can say okay this is our service level uh, but even ad hoc processes you can measure to a certain yes. extent and um, the other thing uh, uh, is uh, uh, the, the interesting thing is uh, we need to act fast okay so uh, if you wanted to uh, if you if you're uh, being in touch with the corona world then you know everybody is talking about this the r0 or the, the spread factor for uh, for the coronavirus is uh, as rich as much as 3.9 at a point of time and if anything below above one that means you are rapidly uh, you know uh, that that factor if it is above one that means it is going to get into a kind of a pandemic mm. now uh, so the nature is also demanding us to be much more respond to these things much faster so the, the whole problem is that we are not responding to things faster enough that is why i think uh, uh, things are moving so how can we respond faster is being able to do rapid deployments i think uh, this has been uh, something that uh, been the it world we have been looking at ever since you know i'm, I'm almost 30 odd years now in this industry and uh, ever since we have been talking about rapid deployment of tools but I think it is only the recent past that has given us the power and the ability of the compute uh, power as well as the technological uh, the, uh, uh, tools what is required to rapid deployments. And uh, that is where we are bringing at the Floro is one of the best examples of these rapid deployment tools, which is uh, Actually, Teams is, uh, uh, is, is uh, except for Teams, all the other tools what you see here are old ones. And of course, on the right hand side, you see IFTTT and Flow and Zapier, these are new ones. So these are third generation tools that we are using now to do rapid deployment. Uh, whereas Outlook, if you look at uh, SharePoint, uh, are a bit older. And you, you may, if you have, uh, uh, you know, if you look at them as, as applications. So that's uh, my uh, uh, contribution on this one. And if there is any questions, you know, you can ask uh, Ara from Right, right. So, by the way, um, if we can um, get Lakmal's input as well on uh, the solutions and how best to, I guess, you know, implement them, um, yeah, especially course, uh, in the state of so, things. Yeah, uh, of course. So, uh, when, uh, actually, as Lassan Osanta was clearly mentioning, so that uh, these uh, solutions which has uh, capability of automating business process and uh, when it comes to automating robotic process or which is more repeatable processes uh, all of these activities actually it is uh, something that that was there since for last couple of decades but where we are missing and uh, what what why we have to adopt these things is, is the question why why we have not adopted uh, adopt is one of the other questions so uh, in, in in my opinion of course uh, why we are kind of delayed or late in this adoption yet is uh, mainly because uh, people are uh, kind of uh, still working on how we can uh, identify these processes and model these processes and how we can convert these physical processes into the digital world mostly there is a conception where okay uh, there is a concept uh, there, there is an idea that everybody thinks okay whatever i do physically is difficult to convert into digital space so <clears throat> mainly what we have to put into people's mind is okay most of the things now, nowadays as Vasanta was clearly mentioning the uh, latter part of the, the his uh, opinion so uh, now we are in the world there are many tools which can accommodate for people to automate their work very simple okay so those days when you are doing uh, data entry from many amount of invoices or forms okay you have to uh, look into the form and enter that information into excel sheet and then you do it now now basically microsoft itself has given a solution like uh, their office mobile app so of course you can capture the table directly from the camera and it automatically transferred into a Excel sheet. You don't have to have a person to sit and enter these details. So, so likewise, artificial intelligence has done a lot 
during last couple of years where all of these things are more possible now so uh, i think uh, vasant and last can add okay we have to change the mindset of people and this is the crucial time to do that because uh, corona virus so they have locked us into right. the rooms right. and houses so uh, i think bosses will have I, something I, to add yeah, as well if i can add to that i think one of the reasons uh, uh, there's a le- less uh, adaptation in uh, you know in if uh, you know in our region which is uh, asia south asia southeast asia is because uh, 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 there's a lot of processes which are still depending on uh, paper and uh, uh, th- that is basically the, the 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 burden on the day to day work is that we are depending on a piece of paper uh, to do something and therefore uh, people feel i cannot process i cannot automate this process if we go back to the workflow we discussed with the gate pass uh, you know in 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 the example ara is mentioning in her village it's a paper based process because they require you to fill a form physically and they require you to give a number physically and they would never be able to think that that could be automated because in their head they have to do this by seeing the person by seeing the id by going there but in in my village they have taken a more pragmatic they're saying okay as long as you have a village id we don't have to question you anymore you show your any government id with the residents in this village we don't need to question and ask you to fill anything we just give you the gate pass so uh, the the next step is they, that is much easier to automate and that's why they were able to do it uh, you know in a semi in in ad hoc way basically their business process how they automated it is like ad hoc because it was not uh, automated but uh, but uh, uh, the mindset is we need paper or the mindset is i need system information and also there's a certain level of complicating things beyond what is required very often what starts oh but uh, you know uh, 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 if i have a digital image uh, with this uh, pass how can that be secure right but we don't have the same requirement to the paper based like aro was saying they can just go and take a photocopy of that document they have no control but they don't want to make it digital because they are scared that that might be uh, you know possible to uh, to uh, to make a a, a false uh, uh, you know uh, gate pass or, or quarantine pass so so we are applying different set of of thinking around the digital solution than around the manual solutions and that's also why we don't see that implementation and then i think there's a lot of organization who really have a big need but don't even think about that they are in that position like like if if you look at a, 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 a local government for example uh, how many things they issue every single year of permits and and uh, licenses and uh, uh, permissions and things that has to go through a process that could be automated and not only automated but they could get the data in the back end to understand how that whole thing works so so you know i think we can talk a lot about that i'm not sure anybody's interested to listen to so long time but <laughs> yeah uh, you'll be talking for the, since since uh, next morning last you know, so, so if you ask me what is but, about uh, mine you know, you know uh, i i think at least that's my 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 view on it and uh, but okay let me also just be clear that you cannot implement any of these solutions in one hour or two hours unless you have already implemented the base right you have to have you have to have some kind of a process so so we need to get this going we need to get people to understand that okay you start today you and then you build up on that you start with some simple processes where the requirement and then you fix some bigger problems uh, with that and later on you can start with the more complicated things and integrations and extensions and uh, apis and all that stuff right absolutely so so my my uh, last two words is i like paper is nice but actually digital is nicer yeah okay yeah. all right i don't know no, that the closing yeah, uh, uh, you know comment almost but uh, we'll let you decide that ara i don't know if you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually so. really good it's a good closing um remark but i do have one i'm so sorry about this but i do i do have one follow up question that may be a little bit you know a little bit controversial um cuz you know people we've encountered a lot of people saying that you know they don't need to implement whatever solution cuz they've never encountered anything to disrupt their current processes right but then when say an earthquake happens and then they actually feel like they feel threatened they actually feel that oh my goodness this is this could actually happen then they start 
I don't know, um, scanning their documents or like actually thinking about how to back up their documents. And it's the same thing, I guess, with fires. You know, they they don't think that fires could happen and then they do. And then they think about, oh, our, our, our work can be compromised. Now, with this co- coronavirus, with sorry, with this COVID-19 outbreak and everyone now has to work from home, those who can, do you think after this, this or during this um, pandemic, people or organizations would think more about this workflow automation? Do you think they would actually start because of this, because of what's happening, they would actually start thinking more and taking this seriously, this, this workflow automation? Well, I, I would I would certainly hope so. I think you know, as an organization, uh, um, uh, I, we have been able to work from home almost all of us, and like we're doing this kind of uh, recording from our homes. Uh, so 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 uh, I I uh, I would hope so. I saw a, I saw a write up from Gartner a few days back saying that only twelve percent of the organizations they have asked uh, could confidently say that they were ready to. Uh, uh, to operate during this time, so 12%. Uh, uh, you know, it 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 means also that uh, essential services, food manufacturing, uh, um, uh, governments, banks are not able to operate. It it is not just that okay, I'm losing a business opportunity, but there's essential services that cannot be provided. Uh, you know, people cannot pay their bills, people cannot receive money, uh, uh, people cannot get uh, uh, food if things are not working. And things could work if if uh, organization would have invested a little bit more time and effort into digital transformation. And I, I can just see, you know, in Philippines, if you look at uh, just this year, we are only in March, right? And just this year, we already had a, um, a, a, a major volcano eruption as well in our you know vicinity of metro manila and now we have this coronavirus i i i think the kids have been off most days than they have gone to school uh, yeah. You know that's an indication of how bad it is, right? And and then last year we had uh, uh, several earthquakes in another region in the Philippines. You know, with in Davao that just was hammered. You know, uh, month in and month out. And then we had the typhoon season. And then we have just the normal kind of disasters like something burns down, right? Uh, you know, or people steal something, or uh, you know the normal day-to-day small disasters that uh, you know we we have we we had a whole big. Uh, uh, construction uh, 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 that went on fire in 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 they were they're building this extended uh, uh, highway and one of the places went into fire and burned down all the buildings around. I mean, it's just not going to stop. I, I think <laughs> this is just it's not even the new norm. This is how it is, right? And organizations need to be ready for this. And there are tools, and they it's just a matter of taking the decision. And I think you know, hopefully, this would help people to understand that we need to be able to uh, to be more agile and more uh, you know uh, work on a skeleton uh, staff uh, work from home work remotely um, and get things done in a in a better way so so uh, maybe that can be the closing comment but i think that's at least my opinion yeah yeah so yeah i think i think in a nutshell uh what we got from that is people need to be more proactive than reactive right because it's easier to implement solutions when you have enough time yes I would say. yes so, now is a good time right because people are at home they might not have the workload so it's a good time to uh, look into some of this stuff and start to get something developed i mean if you want to implement floto or in a doc today we can help you with that and and uh, you know by the time that uh, that uh, the market is uh, opening up you are hitting the ground running as you say so uh, uh, let's let's get it done we can run even online right. demo right if anybody wants you know so yeah. you just they can contact us and we can do a live demo yes uh, absolutely while we are having Maybe, some uh, Ara, if you could do us a favor and put uh, some links around you know uh, our uh, websites and things you know so yes. people can be in touch okay by the way, Ara, you know, just before you go, you know, just one thing, um, um, you know, today to give you a little bit of statistics, you know, 93% of our team online and working today out of 150 odd people. And uh, the others are, of course, you know, for personal reasons, some of them are on leave, you know, so uh, in fact, places from Nepal, it's 100% 
uh, online and they are working so that's how uh, you know you could uh, you could be productive in uh, in in situations like this just exactly yeah, right yeah. right and here we are doing a webinar so yes. <laughs> yeah exactly a lot of yeah. and we didn't have any uh, dogs or cats or kids or anything embarrassing happening until now i am sitting on the edge of my chair i was thinking i don't want to fall down so <laughs> but uh, everything worked out fine so thank you very much thanks for yes, the yes thank you very much lars thank you wasanta and thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye bye bye